Well, last night we laid out our energy future, and it's both complicated and expensive. Now, how will that change an entire culture built on cheap energy? That story tonight in Oil Myths, Oil Facts, a CBS 19 I-Team investigation. I am Oz, the great and powerful. You know, there is no wizard sitting there behind the curtain waiting to solve all our problems for us. We are experiencing the beginning of the end of cheap energy. So how will our world change? All right, first, personal transportation. Now, we're spending a lot of time these days talking about smaller cars, alternate fuels, but is that really the answer? Is it even the right discussion? Author James Kunstler says no. We have a big to-do list of other things that we have to pay attention to, not just how are we gonna run all our cars, because the truth is, we're not gonna run all the cars by other means, whether we like it or not. If you can't get gas... Dr. Jim Tarter, dean of UT Tyler's Business School. Where is the tipping point at which we uh, consider using a bicycle, carpooling, uh, using mass transportation? When it comes to travel, forget planes. Think trains. No other project that we could do right away with a high likelihood of success would do more to mitigate our oil consumption than restoring the passenger railroad system in America. Large-scale agriculture depends on cheap natural gas and diesel. We're going to have to make new arrangements for growing our food closer to home. It will probably require more human attention. It will probably have to be conducted on a smaller, finer scale. And we're completely unprepared for these changes. We're going to see as much concern about a loaf of bread, a gallon of milk, as we are now feeling about a gallon of gasoline. And our cities will change. In my opinion, we're, we're going to see uh, a radical contraction of all of our great metroplexes all over North America. Gaze into the crystal. So, we have two visions of the future. What's this I see? Dr. Tarter is hopeful. There's probably some coalition that if we could, if we could unburden ourselves from the political ramifications, could look at this. Boone Pickens said, address it like the Manhattan Project. Kunstler's view is darker. How are we going to produce our food differently? How are we going to reorganize commerce and trade? when the, the national chain big box organizations die, which they will, how we're going to get around the large continent of North America when the airlines fail, which they are now doing, how are we going to educate our children when the centralized school districts are based completely on the yellow school bus fleets. There's a long list of daily activities that are crucial to the future of our society, and we're just focusing all our energy on how we're going to keep this happy motoring system going. And it's simply not enough. So, guys, we have two alternate views of a society without cheap energy. And without being too dramatic about it, which one we end up getting depends on the choices we make now. Back to you.